I love living on planet Earth. I know that whatever I need to survive and be happy, the Earth will provide it for me. I particularly love food, and I'm constantly amazed at the different kinds of vegetables and fruits growing across the globe, in different climates, and in such amazing, intricate ways. Have you ever stained your fingers touching beetroots? Isn't the color so rich and unique? Have you ever cut open a pomegranate and looked at all the delicate seeds resting inside the fruit? Have you ever pulled carrots from the ground? At first glance, there's just a sea of green leaves, but if you burrow your fingers below the soil, you'll pull out bright orange and sometimes purple or yellow roots, which are the carrots, and you can roast or boil or eat carrots raw to enjoy its crunchy texture. Have you ever poured golden, silky, smooth maple syrup over a stack of pancakes? Maple syrup comes from maple trees, and around spring, the trees begin making maple sap, a thin, sugary liquid that feeds its buds so that they can bloom into leaves during the spring. Once the leaves on the tree have grown, the sap flows back down the trunk so that we can take some and make maple syrup. So maple trees feed themselves, and they feed us at the same time. For me, part of what makes me love planet Earth is the fact that it nourishes me and my family and friends and everyone around me. Plants know how to produce enough food to make us strong and happy. What makes you feel connected to the earth? It's easy to feel connected to earth when it does so much for us. So now let's explore how planet earth makes itself a safe home for us. Well, firstly, the earth knows how to provide us with clean air so that we can fill our lungs with oxygen. How does the earth do this? Well, many trees and plants clean the air we breathe by breathing in all the yucky stuff in our air, including carbon dioxide, which is a gas that is currently making our planet warmer and contributing to climate change. Trees then breathe out nice, clean oxygen, which helps us keep our hearts beating and our minds sharp. Trees need carbon dioxide to grow, and we need oxygen to grow. So trees are helping us while helping themselves. The oceans also play a critical role in capturing carbon dioxide from things like cars and planes that pollute the air. Around a quarter of all carbon dioxide emissions are absorbed by the ocean, making it one of the world's largest stores of carbon. The planet also provides us with clean water. Plants and animals in rivers and lakes clean our water and filter out all that gunk so that we can use the water to drink and cook and clean. Algae, that green slimy organism, which actually is neither a plant nor an animal, cleans water for us. Algae uses pollutants and sunlight to grow, so it's doing us a favour and doing itself a favour by cleaning our water. And this is just one example of the ways planet Earth provides us with fresh water. An ecosystem is all the living things in an area, like in a lake or a sea or a river. Ecosystems work delicately in perfect harmony. Plants and animals rely on one another in different ways. They create a healthy environment for all living things. People are also like this. We depend on one another to be healthy and happy. And that's why we live in communities. So the variety in plants and animals in an ecosystem is called biodiversity. Biodiversity is really important. If there are many different plants and animals in rivers and lakes, or if there's lots of biodiversity, then that means it's easier to keep water clean. As I mentioned, the planet also provides us with amazing food. Plants, like beanstalks, know how to grow big and tall so that we can eat them on our toast. Did you know that sometimes plants grow better when they grow beside other plants? In Canada and North America, indigenous communities, or the first inhabitants of North America before European settlers, found that growing beans, squash, and corn close together helps each of the plants. But how does that work? Well, when the corn grows tall, the beans can wrap around it and use the corn for support as they also grow tall. 
The beans also release a chemical into the soil called nitrogen, which can be good for other plants. The squash doesn't grow tall, like the corn and the beans, but it spreads across the ground, helping prevent weeds. Indigenous people in Canada and America call beans, corn, and squash the three sisters because they take care of each other like sisters, brothers, and siblings often do. Through exploring how the earth provides us with clean air, clean water, and yummy food, we can see that the earth knows how to care for itself and us at the same time. We all know how to live in balance. There's also one simple thing that planet Earth provides us with. It's beauty. Aside from the clean air and water and fresh fruits and vegetables, the Earth is also just really lovely to look at, from crystal clear rivers to cool green forests and woodlands. In the UK, we're lucky to be surrounded by so much natural beauty. What is the most beautiful place in the UK that you visited? For me, one of the most beautiful places I visited is Glencoe in the Highlands in the north of Scotland. Glencoe is a narrow valley surrounded by mountains and beautiful green rolling hills. Looking at the mountains makes me feel so small, but also protected by their magnificent presence. How did Glencoe form? 420 million years ago. Can you imagine what the world was like 420 million years ago? That's over 2 million years before dinosaurs. A volcano erupted in the area, and the beauty that we're left with is the remains of the volcano. Isn't it amazing to think that the beautiful nature we get to look at has been forming for hundreds of millions of years? So much of our culture revolves around nature and planet Earth. Many festivals around the world celebrate the fresh food, clean air, clean water, and stunning beauty the earth provides for us. Have you ever seen a cherry blossom tree? In springtime, cherry blossom trees wake up from their winter slumber and sprout beautiful pink blossoms from their branches, like a wild head of pink hair. They light up villages, towns, and cities across the world. In Japan, many people follow hanami, which is an ancient tradition of watching the cherry blossoms bloom and appreciating their short-lived beauty as the blossoms fall and the trees prepare for a warm summer. Many people have a tea ceremony under the cherry blossoms. People even look out for a cherry blossom forecast, which shares pre precise information on when they'll bloom. People celebrate Hanami in the UK and across the world as well. Will you celebrate it this year? In Gloucestershire, in the south of England, every year people participate in a cheese rolling festival where they come together to race a massive wheel of cheese down a hill. People who study history have said that the festival may have started a long time ago to celebrate the end of winter and the beginning of spring. In Peru, many people celebrate an ancient festival called Inti Raimi. During the winter solstice, or around December 21st, when the sun is farthest from the earth, everyone gathers to thank the sun for all it gives us, like heat and energy and light. And everyone also gathers to ask it to come closer so we can actually get more heat, energy and light, like we do in the summer. Inti Raimi was first celebrated by the Inca Empire, which is an ancient civilization that existed in what is now Peru in South America around the 1400s and 1500s. It's amazing to think that around 600 years later, we're still thanking the sun for everything it gives us. Let's not forget another thing planet Earth provides us with, happiness and feeling good. Have you ever sat in silence in a forest? 
the wind moving through the trees and rustling the leaves as if passing them by and saying hello. It can be so peaceful. In Japan, many practice something called forest bathing, or in Japanese, Shinrin Yoku in their daily lives. Shinrin Yoku, or forest bathing, doesn't actually involve water, or what we might think of when we think of bathing. But it actually means connecting with nature and using our five senses, which are taste, sight, smell, touch, and sound, to really take in nature. Shinrin Yoku can mean walking aimlessly in the forest and touching the barks of the trees, smelling the moss growing on the rocks, dipping our fingers in the river and tasting the raindrops on our tongue. What's amazing is that Shinrin Yoku is good for our health. Isn't it wonderful how nature, just existing as it is, is good for our health? I don't know about you, but I feel wonderful thinking about how the earth protects me and my loved ones in so many ways. Do you feel the same way? The earth provides us with so much, but unfortunately, many of us don't treat the earth that well in return. Because of this, the earth is suffering and is changing. Why is this happening? Well, let's start from the beginning. There are gases called greenhouse gases that are important in making sure planet Earth doesn't get too cold for us to live. These gases include carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and others, and they trap heat in our atmosphere, like a greenhouse. Unfortunately, many of the activities in our daily lives release too many greenhouse gases, and now there is a buildup of these gases in our atmosphere, and our planet is becoming too warm. It's like if you turn the radiator up all the way in a tiny room. But what are these activities that release greenhouse gases? When we drive in a car, most cars burn fuel, which releases carbon dioxide into the air. When we fly in an airplane, the plane uses fuel that also releases carbon dioxide. And when we turn on our central heating, that too can release carbon dioxide. Now think about all the driving and flying people around the world do, and how we like to keep toasty warm in the winter. That's a lot of greenhouse gases being released into the air, don't you think? Think of all the objects and appliances and items of clothing in the world. Making things often requires us to use natural resources like water, wood from trees, minerals from deep underground, and oil and gas. To make these items, companies also often burn fuel, which again releases carbon dioxide. Many of us live in a culture where we're encouraged to keep buying new things instead of fixing or reusing things. Companies make lots of stuff to keep up with everyone buying new things which means we use lots of resources and release lots of greenhouse gases. These are just a few examples of activities or actions that release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. But why are we talking about this in the first place? Why is it concerning that our planet is getting too warm? It is worrying because the clean air, water, fresh food, beauty, and inner peace that planet Earth gives us will be affected. Let's learn more. When our planet gets too warm, weather over time changes. For example, as the planet warms, summers in the UK will become hotter and drier, which will affect the plants and animals that rely on rain to grow. What happens then? If we think back to our conversation about ecosystems, you'll remember that ecosystems are very delicate. If animals or plants in an ecosystem begin to have a difficult time, this will affect all living things within this ecosystem, because ecosystems are places where all living things rely on one another. When ecosystems don't work and biodiversity decreases, it makes it hard for planet Earth to provide us with clean air, water and food. We also lose the variety in nature and wildlife that makes our home, the planet, so beautiful. Let's start with food. 
changing weather will affect how we grow food across the world. If the weather gets warmer on average, we will have to learn how to grow different fruits and vegetables in the UK, because what we currently grow won't be able to survive in different temperatures. Some parts of the world will struggle to grow food because of changing weather, which will affect everyone, but particularly poor communities across the world who rely on the food they grow to make money and to feed their families. Wouldn't it be sad if some people were hungry because the planet was getting warmer? Because of the changing average weather across the globe, sea levels are rising, which means there's too much water in the oceans and seas. One of the reasons for this is melting glaciers and ice caps due to rising temperatures across the world. Think about how many towns, cities and villages are located by the sea. Even in the UK, there's Edinburgh, Newcastle, Brighton and Aberystwyth and so many more. Rising sea levels may affect towns, cities and villages by the sea and rivers due to potential flooding and something called coastal erosion where the cliffs crumble from impact by the sea and more extreme weather. This will affect poor countries and communities because they may not have the money or the resources to protect themselves from flooding or to move home. Rising sea levels will also upset water ecosystems, which will in turn decrease the amount of fresh water we have, which will limit drinking water for communities. But it's not just changing weather patterns we need to be aware of. Planet Earth is changing in other ways due to human behaviors and activities. Companies are cutting down trees quickly to make products, grow food, raise cattle for dairy products and meat, and to build cities at a very quick rate. Have you heard of the Amazon? The Amazon is a really large rainforest in South America. Over three million species call the Amazon home. Animals and plants like colorful toucans and majestic jaguars. But currently in the Amazon, the area the size of 4,000 football fields is being cut down every hour to support companies to keep making food and building cities. This is called deforestation and it is happening in forests all over the world. As trees breathe in carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas, Deforestation affects our atmosphere and air quality. The Amazon also provides 20% of the world's oxygen. It's sometimes considered the lungs of the world. So if the Amazon is rapidly disappearing, this will certainly affect the quality of our air. Deforestation means that many of the 3 million species living in the Amazon will be without a home, and this will affect biodiversity. Also, one million people call the Amazon home and rely on the forest for food and their well-being. For example, some of the communities living in the Amazon see the rainforest as spiritual, with every flower, tree, plant and animal having their own spirits. They practice many rituals involving plants and animals in the Amazon based on their beliefs to heal members of their community. Deforestation will affect these communities' well-being and culture, amongst other things. All of these issues, changes to our air, water, food and forests, make up what many call the climate crisis. The climate crisis is a challenge that everyone across the world is facing, but one that we can and must tackle urgently. So let's talk about that more. 